Yeah. And it, here we go then. Are you ready? All right, let's do here it. Here we go. In three, two, one, you're live. Hey, uh, welcome to the Jeremiah Show. Dr. D, how you doing? We're, we're in here on a Monday. I love this. And it, it looks like rain out there. I know. And there's even the 20% chance for right. rain on the Tuesday, which means this is sort of a precursor. What about today? Is it, is I've rain seen rain? nothing about rain today, uh, but I'm keeping my fingers crossed. We like the rain here. <laughs> <laughs> um, oh, I am. we got a great show today. Yeah. And, uh, it, it, so much so that such a special guest and this is a good, the show. Yeah, this is a good irony, though. It really is. It's a good irony. We're doing radio. And who do we have on the program today? I'm not going to tell you yet. <laughs> <laughs> I like to tease you, Doc. Okay. You, know, so you know that. All right. So let me, I'll get to the intro, though, so that we can get to our special guest. Yes. And give her most of the time. All right. Drum roll. Like, like, like Jim Stack says, <laughs> drum roll. <first. laughs> yes. I love this quote. I'm going to read this first. What lies behind us and what lies ahead of us are tiny matters compared to what lives within us. Oh, wow. I love that. Please Don't tell me who that? said that. Henry David Thoreau. Ooh. I got, I got to read that, some of his stuff. He's so quotable. Yeah. So quotable. Okay, so let me tell you a little story here before we get to our special guest. Relating to the topic mm -hmm. at hand today. When I was a child, my grandmother gave me a gift that completely lit my imagination on fire at this young age when I received this gift. It was a simple enough gift, but within its pages, it opened the world to me. It was only maybe one inch thick. It arrived every month. Its glossy pages often stuck together, so fresh off the press were they, <laughs> yes. until they were carefully separated by my small fingers, where their colors and their magnificence unveiled itself and burst forth. The pages smelled of ink and what I imagine a photographer's dark room must smell like. Ooh. Chemicals and developing fluids. I can guess the magazine. <laughs> I bet you can. My grandmother had bought me a year subscription for National Geographic, and I fell in love with the photography. Was that what you're going to guess? That or life. The life, yeah, life was a good one. Oh, yeah. Was but National Geographic, anymore? even today. It's the same. I haven't held a National Geographic in my hands for so many years. Oh, got to change that. But it, they, honestly, my imagination, I spent hours, hours looking at these. At that these, was when the they duck. took you places you'd never been right? long before the internet and live cameras and all of that stuff. It was fabulous. And, so, and world-class award-winning photographers. Oh, I yeah. mean, just, just amazing shots. So this is my first my first experience with photography. Month after month, uh, my mailbox brought me another gift. The gift of seeing the world, imagining the far off places. Like I said, I would spend hours, hours and hours every day laying on the floor, slowly <laughs> flipping the pages. My imagination could not be contained and I made up stories from the photographs that I saw. I never did anything with a photography bug, but photography does still excite, excite my imagination. Just like a good book, I can get lost in a great photograph, sometimes for hours, like when I was a child. Silo 118 is pleased to announce the, an exhibit. <laughs> Let me do that again. Sorry, Dr. D. Three, two, one. Silo 118 is so pleased to announce that there exhibition of new images by international award-winning photographer Patricia Houghton Clark is extended till November 12th. Oh, great. Yeah, it was, it, it finished on the 29th and it by popular demand and, uh, and in just the great, yeah, just the great photos. Crying uh, and please, <laughs> please. Please. banging on the door. Please, <laughs> please more days. November 12th, it's been extended to. Um, so the series that started in 2014 is 
Patricia's California Redwood series. The title is Primal Wild. Love Ooh, that title. Love it. And it portrays a deep dive into the natural world, the primal wild, Dr. D. Mm. These analog images reflect a yearning for the quiet and the wisdom of our ancient majestic forests. Patricia is a self-taught, award-winning photographer and has focused her imagery on culture, history, and human nature. She has decades of travel in over 40 countries and years of work in visual arts and social justice efforts, projection creation, photography, fine art exhibitions, teaching, and community development. As the co-founder of an award-winning affordable housing nonprofit and volunteer with refugee support organizations, her work has been an exploration of humanity, both near, here at home, and far. From the jungles of Borneo to the, Borneo, sorry, did I do that one again? <laughs> Three, my mouth isn't working on a Monday. <laughs> Three, two, one. From the jungles of Borneo to the drag culture of Southern California, her interest in blending photography. Start from one more time. Three, two, one. From the jungles of Borneo to the drag culture of Southern California, her interest in blending photographic work with a quest to promote understanding between cultures has powered her imagery for many years. Patricia's award-winning photography has been featured in exhibitions and publications around the United States and Europe. A unique collection of her photographs from the 2007 Obama presidential campaign and election night in Grant Park is included in the Barack Obama Presidential Library Collection. Mm. She speaks three more, <laughs> three more languages than me. Because I'm obviously not speaking English very well today. <laughs> <laughs> she speaks English, Spanish, and Italian. <laughs> and her new book, Facing Ourselves, Reckoning, is out now. I'm going to give you information on how you can get that. It's a beautiful book. Mm. Patricia Houghton Clark is our very special guest today. Welcome, Patricia. Thank you so much. It's so great to be here with you. Well, you know, um, I don't know. Uh, it, how I feel is that uh, it's so great for you to be here for us because it's an honor. It's an honor to have you on and to talk photography and all things in your world. You have a fascinating life you're living here. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. It's a total pleasure. I look forward to our chat. You, you look forward to? Our chat. Oh, a chat. Yeah, we're just going to have a little chat here. That's it. I hope you, I hope you're, enjoying the uh do we find you in santa barbara or where in the world will we find you today i'm actually in my um live work loft in carpinteria oh okay oh wow um i noticed on facebook i was looking through your facebook and, and we've got a lot of the same friends so that was nice nice to see and i i love carpinteria I, just, I was just out there for the avocado festival isn't that such a great great little city great little town town and they're very welcoming and i really enjoyed living here i've been here for seven about seven and a half years now hmm. well yeah it's um so you've got the what it looks like and feels like a little bit out there storm cloud so i hope you're having a nice cup of tea or cup of coffee and we're gonna have a little chat as as patricia says mm -hmm. i'd love to ask in regards to the your start uh not so much in terms of who gave you your first camera that kind of thing but in terms of the processing part, that's what always intrigues me because I took a photography class in college. It was a junior college and it was one semester and it was black and white. And I learned how to take from the film, put it in the camera, take the shots, take it out of the camera, put it into the developing container, process it in the developing container, then take it into the dark room to the enlarger with the photo paper and the enlarger and create the images. And I loved the fact that I could literally go from beginning to end and, and have a finished work. And it was so cool. Is that how you started with the chemicals and the containers and all of that stuff? No, I didn't. I didn't start with that. I started um, really 
doing my photography full time later when digital dark rooms had pretty much taken over dark rooms. Mm. And so I have a um, film processor in town. His name is Sam Amin, who is an extraordinary technician and artist. And he's been developing my black and white film for many, many years. And um, so I get my film and I take it into him. And then I call him and I say, did anything show up on the film? <laughs> <laughs> Fingers crossed. Anything there? <laughs> did I take the lens cap off? Did I remember to do that? So he's uh, been extraordinarily helpful and uh, along with many other people. And so I, um, I actually do all my post-production in my studio and I use Lightroom. And then I, I can print my own work up to a certain size and whatever I can't print, I send to um, Reno to a lab there with somebody that I've been working with for many years as well. Well, Patricia, we, I want to build up to go forward and then go back to, to your early days. But let's talk about one thing that I read over and over and over as I did my research on you for this interview. You've had, most in the most simple stated way, you've had this lifelong fascination with human beings. And I don't know if everybody has a fascination with human beings. I don't, do, we, do we think about each other enough? I don't think we do. But mm. I wanted to kind of dissect that a little bit and understand this fascination that you have and how it manifests itself in your, in your work. Um, more specifically, I think it's been said that you have a real fascination with human nature. And you've pursued a lifelong journey of understanding our basic human nature through foreign lands and at home, through all these travels, these 40 countries and more. And you've captured a lot of this through your camera lens. Where did this early fascination come from? And, and then how did it manifest in your life to become this, this career that you have now? That you've... Well, you know, it's interesting. You were talking about National Geographic's. Mm -hmm. and my parents had a collection of National Geographics at, at home. And I did the same thing that you were talking about. I would sit by myself in a room and just pouring over and looking at maps, getting the globe out, looking at where things were. Yeah, I, I forgot the globe. I did that too. Yeah. And, and that really, um, you know, I grew up obviously in, in the States and um, it was just like you were saying, it was this window into, wow. You know, it was out there. Right. <laughs> um, it's been so cool because my grandchildren, I've introduced them to them. And when they come visit me, they don't live in town. When they come visit me, they go straight to the National Geographic and pull them out. And they'll sit there for hours doing the mm. same. So, so that um, availability through the printed matter and those photographs and the stories definitely had a big influence on me. And um, the other, another, another publication that actually had a big influence on me was um, the book by Rachel Carson, The Sense of Wonder. Hmm. I don't know if I know that. Do you, Dr. No. no? It's, it's an amazing book. And my eldest sister gave it to me when I was 12. And she said, I don't think you might like this. And it was, I just went, wow, this is, I totally related to what she was writing about in the photographs. And so I, I've always been kind of a wanderer. I grew up in the middle of eight children, eight girls. And, yeah. Wow, eight girls. <laughs> yeah, eight, and this was, I yeah. can't even imagine what the, her father must have gone through. <laughs> <laughs> With wanting to protect eight girls. Wow. Yeah, yeah. really unusual life. But, um, and so I was, in the, I was the middle child. I was sort of the observer. You know, I would sort of hang back and watch everybody and go out for these long walks by myself. In fact, this Primal Wild show reminds me of those days when I would just kind of, just observing, you know, mm -hmm. just observing, um, what was out there and who was out there. And I feel really fortunate that I had the space to do that. You know, I didn't have a programmed childhood. We went mm -hmm. to school. You just kind of fended for yourself, mm -hmm. you know, and um, there was a lot of freedom in that. Yeah. And so that inspired, that helped inspire 
your fascination with the world and and just observing. Uh, but before we move on from National Graphic, I think that's really fascinating that that was also an inspiration to you. And just to reflect on that magazine for a moment. See, I, didn't, I haven't held one. I haven't seen one for many, many years. Um, I've seen National Geographic on TV, the channel, but I haven't seen an actual, which is so much different. I've got um, some at home. I'll bring them in for you. Yeah. <laughs> they, uh, remember, remember how the old ones smell too? Oh, yeah. They, they smell, oh, they, 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 like, like you're saying. Yeah. And then the old, old, like a little bit of, as they got older, you know, and they're packed in the boxes and the mill, kind of a mildewy a smell. Bit, and yeah. That, and that, all that stuff, that great stuff, which just lent, you know, just kind of brought a, the photographs even more to light it had a it was a um a smelling like a smell well, magazine was, yeah it was, it was a full century kind yeah, of full thing century, visual as well as uh, uh um uh, olfactory now the uh, so you're saying patricia that your grandchildren they still make the magazine i'm, I'm sorry i'm i'm sure they do but i'm i, I just didn't know this and um it, how do your grandchildren react when they've got cell phones now with you know, photos on, let's say, Instagram uh, versus where, where they've got this, actually, this magazine. Do, do they well, talk about... Those particular children don't have cell phones. Oh, that's good. <laughs> oh. Keeping them away from them, um, they're eight and 10. And as a matter of fact, they're living in Oaxaca right now so that they can learn to speak Spanish and get the experience of living in another culture. Mm, smart parents. I like that. That's good. Well, do you see the same? Did you see that in your grandchildren? I'm just very curious about this, that that curiosity and spending all that time. I mean, think about a magazine that you spent that many hours with. I mean, they're really, I can't think of many others. I mean, you mentioned Life, Dr. Yeah. D, and, and uh, the, the magazine that you mentioned, the book that you mentioned. But isn't that a unique experience and did you did it still have many generations later the same effect on your grandchildren yeah definitely definitely and it also kind of you know there might be a story in there that that kind of brings back a, a memory for me and so it opens up stories for me with them of my own life which kind of adds a different depth to it for them right so you look at them together and then they they're able you're able to share experiences with them from your own experience now um did you do you remember uh, a a particular magazine or the first magazine or just national geographic in general i don't remember the first one but i i have to say the other really big influence for me were um uh, it was i think it was a time life series of the great painters mm -hmm. and i spent a lot of time looking at the painters and so um Rembrandt in particular it was a big a big uh, resource for me and as it's turned out my work incorporates a lot of chiaroscuro and finding natural light so there was the combination of the painters and the National Geographic that kind of created this merge for me in my interests and style hmm. And you mentioned that you, as a middle child, you had this freedom where you went out and you wandered and you observed things and were in nature. Um, did When did you pick up a camera first and when did you start realizing you were going to capture your vision, your view of the world on film? You know, I, I, ha I had a camera as a child and... Um, probably like most kids did, you know, I had a little Instamatic and, and I loved getting my pictures back. And, and then over the years I was always shooting and, and then I started traveling when I was 19. And it was actually in Africa. I went on a Trans-Africa trip with my ex-husband and I were on a, a group from London to Nairobi, four months in the back of a truck. Mm -hmm. and, there was a moment that I remembered not that long ago where I was standing in the Sahara Desert and wishing I had a way to transmit what I was seeing. And I had a little Instamatic, you know, one of those pocket Instamatics. And years later, I thought, oh my God, it was the camera. I found the way that I could transmit what I see and what I feel. Mm. 
That's that's a beautiful story. And when we come back, I want to I want to dig a little bit more into that, you know, that fascination that you have with human nature and capturing them through your lens. Um, we're going to come right back from a break. Stick with us. Let me give you a little information here on how you can find Patricia uh, Houghton Clark. You can go to her website. That's probably the easiest. Patricia, and then Houghton is spelled H O U G H T O N Clark dot photography dot com is dot it, com. Is it, is um, does it have not? A, mine has a dot in between uh, your name and photography. Uh, okay, no, no, no. The website, Patricia. Okay, let me. I'll do that again, Richard. Okay, three, two, one. Let me tell you how you can find Patricia Houghton Clark. You can find her on your web, her website at Patricia Houghton Clark dot com. Let me spell Houghton for you: H O U G H T O N. And then Clark, C L A R K E dot com, Patricia Houghton Clark dot com. You can also find her on Instagram at P C P H O T O G. On Facebook at Patricia Houghton Clark dot photography. And Silo 118 presents Patricia Houghton Clark's Primal Wild. Started on October 14th. It's been extended to November 14th, or excuse me, November 12th. You can go to silo118.com. Good. Okay. That's the commercial? That was one of the commercials. Okay. I've got three. Right. Uh, Patricia, I need you to do one thing for me before we continue. Can you go into your Zoom audio settings? Thank you for saying that. And can you check and see there's a checkbox? that is labeled for the microphone, that is labeled automatically adjust mic volume or level. Is that box checked? Hang on a second, let me see. Sure. Because what, happen, what happens is you cross fade out. If anybody, if, if we talk okay. to each other, talk yeah. over you, or you talk over us, it cuts you out totally. Just. I'm not seeing what you're describing here. Are you in uh, are you in the uh, settings for audio? I can I can see the 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 mute and microphone button on, down on the lower left. Correct. And there's a little arrow and if you click on that it brings up a menu and at the bottom of that menu is settings and you okay. click on that. Okay. And then you'll see on the right-hand side, the widest portion, you've got speaker volume, microphone volume, and a line that says automatically adjust. Is the box on under the microphone settings, is it checked or unchecked? It's checked. I'm sorry? It's checked. It is checked? Yes. I'm sorry, I can't. She said it's checked. It okay, really, it I need checked. you to uncheck it. All right, and then you can close that, okay. and then we're all set. Now we're get, I'm I'm also I just heard feedback for you just now <clears throat> on that. You, well, we'll we'll, uh, we'll monitor it and make sure that we're not getting that. So you see, so it's it's she's getting her she's getting feedback when we ask her questions. Are you getting feedback? Um, I'm getting a little. It's like a little uh, echoey, a little bit. A, a little repeat. Okay. I'm not hearing it at this end right now, but we'll keep monitoring it. And, and, and if we have a problem, we'll see what we can do to fix it because I'm not hearing it at this moment. Okay. Do you have a TV on behind you or anything like that? No. Okay. Okay. It sounds better Shall now. We? That's much yeah. better. Yeah. Shall we? Thanks for, thanks for checking yeah, on that. Thank you very much. All right. Here we go in three. Give me a second. Let me find my spot. Okay. Okay. Three, two, one. You're live. Human nature. We're here talking with Patricia how to <laughs> I where my mouth is working today. Three. Okay, go ahead. Three, two, one. You're Welcome live. back to the Jeremiah. No, 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 no. Wait for me to give you the live. Three, two, one. You're live. Welcome back to the Jeremiah Show. We're here with Patricia Houghton Clark. She is an international award winning fine art photographer. She's just released her new book, Facing Ourselves, Reckoning. Um, welcome back, Patricia. She, 
we're just talking human nature. We're talking human nature and your fascination with it. I've got a fascination with human nature. Um, you pursued a lifelong journey, again, of understanding our basic human nature through your travels and your camera lens and your art. Um, we started talking about the early fascination of human nature. And, and you mentioned, you know, one of eight, you're a daughter of one. You've got eight sisters or seven sisters. You're one of eight in the family. Um, and you got out and you just explored and you and nature and, and, and then slowly developed over your lifetime, this, this uh, realizing that the camera was your, was was the the vehicle or the vessel in which you would um you could you could bring what you see and and your perspective to us um and it's just some beautiful beautiful work i i, I want to send you if if you're not driving your car when you're listening to this check out patricia houghton clark.com and you can see some of your your outstanding work okay so did you see a career, Patricia, through the study of our of the basics of our human nature, or did that was that just one subject out of many that you explore? I was always interested in you know in history and travel and art, and I did a lot of different. I worked in a lot of different mediums before I settled on photography, including batik and spent time living in Java and working in a small bamboo hut with a few artists in the mid 70s. And um, so I've studied painting and drawing and um, I've written quite a bit, but I never studied photography. And um, as I kept going and traveling, I realized that my photographs were really um, representing me the best. And that mm. I felt the most kinship with with that medium. And um, as it turns out, interestingly enough, my, I'm named after my father and my grandfather. So it was Herbert Houghton Clark, senior, Herbert Houghton Clark, Jr., and then me. And um, when I started showing my work, my father said, you know, I used to teach photography. <laughs> I said, really? I had no idea. <laughs> Incredible. He was also a shooter, and, but I never saw his work he was very secretive about it and we didn't live close by. And so I never saw his studio or anything. So it was really interesting to me. It makes you wonder about how things are passed down. Mm -hmm. For sure. That's, that's it. That's so interesting. And I love that you were named after your father and your grandfather. That's, that's, that's beautiful. Mm -hmm. Uh, when you see all the things that, that are happening today, I mean, on my way in here, I was watching about, you know, the Russians holding up the, the, the ships with the grain, you know, to feed all these, you know, these developing countries and this, and all the things that have been happening, there's just been so much. And, and in your opinion, Patricia, you know, human nature, you look, you want to see the good side. There's a lot of good, but in your opinion, how are we flawed from your travels and your, and the photographs, the things that you capture, how are humans flawed in your opinion? That's a really good question. You know, I tend to, I tend to sort of just absorb the fact that humans are flawed across the board. You know, they're, they're a flaw. If you go to any country, you can go to any city and you're going to find people who are doing things that, that I would consider negative or dark or hurtful. And when I work with a community, what I try to do is transform that and say, despite all this darkness, like with the, mig the migration project that I started in 2011, it was looking at refugees and how they were coming into Southern Europe and Southern Italy in particular. And so I went to talk to the villagers to say, how are you doing this? Because I know you don't have much resources either. And um, this lovely man said to me, we know what it's like to carry a suitcase. Hmm. They had had this history of migration themselves, and so their empathy was really high. Hmm. And that's what I focus on. I was going to ask that. Is there the negative in the world, the bad in the world sometimes gets, well, actually, I think it always gets the most attention. Hmm. How, 
what is you what is your eye your lens attracted to most do you do you tend to see that negative and, and capture that and that's what resonates with that showings with your art or or do you find what is your nature your your natural uh, you know your natural inclination what's your natural what are you drawn to naturally your eye your what you care about and your art i would say what i'm drawn to naturally i'll give you an example when i was um working um with the refugees someone said to me oh my gosh you know you should go down to the border this was during trump's presidency and you should be photographing what's happening at the border and i said there are a lot of great photographers down there who are doing that and they're doing a great job and my focus is on almost the next step like what comes from that how are communities welcoming people and and how can we how can we make it better and it's not to discount the, the negative at all it's like this primal wild show i've chosen not to talk a lot about the degradation and the scariness of losing the forest but rather to give an opportunity to walk into a, a forest environment in a gallery so that you can feel it and feel joy and feel peace. And, and then, you know, let's talk about what we need to do. Mm -hmm. We're going to talk about that when we come back from the break. Before I, uh, I would go to that break, though, let's talk about how, in your opinion, we are magnificent creatures. What are some of the best that you've seen in people? Right now, you want me to talk about that? Yes, please. <laughs> um, well, I, I would say just, you know, like what this man told me, we, we know what it's like to carry a suitcase. I think that that human beings are more compassionate than negative. I think we're more loving than not. And, uh, you know, you see it every day. You see it every day. And if we get so focused on what people are doing wrong, which is all sensationalized, we miss out on everything else. And so it, it, it feels just totally natural to me. It's not like it's even a decision for me. I'm not attracted to go to a disaster. I'm just not. It's not. I, I know it's going to be covered and we will be able to see it, but it's not. It's like that's my work. Patricia Houghton Clark is our special guest today. She's an international award winning fine art photographer. Her book is out. It's Facing Ourselves Reckoning. You can find her on Instagram at PCPHOTOG, PC Photog. On Facebook at Patricia Houghton Clark Photography. And uh, her website might be the easiest. Go to her website. You can find all the links to everything else at Patricia Houghton Clark .com. Houghton, again, is spelled H O U G H T O N. You can also DM Patricia for more information about fine art archival prints and check her out in person at Silo and her art at Silo 118 as it presents Patricia Houghton Clark Primal Wild. It ends on November 12th, so get there as soon as you can. Silo118.com. Uh, we will be right back. Let me read another commercial here, Richard. Oh, you still have? Okay. Yeah, well, I just figured we'd stop and then yeah, you okay. can drop this in right. uh, somewhere. You ready? Uh -huh. Three, two, one. We are now fundraising to support the people of Ukraine through Direct Relief International and the International Organization for Migration. Facing Ourselves Reckoning is a book supporting social change. Ten years after journeying to a small Italian village, where the Facing Ourselves project was born, photographer and activist Patricia Houghton Clark made her way through 2020, camera in hand, documenting the changes in her lives through the lens of a small central California coastal communities. Seeking to help foster positive change and channel the emotional turmoil of recent events, Patricia created a unique hardcover photography book called Facing Ourselves Reckoning and is donating all profits to national and international social justice organizations. Known for international fine art documentary photography, 
exhibitions, she believes this series will be more accessible in book form while also serving the greater community by noting all sales and proceeds. Facing Ourselves Reckoning is a signed hardcover book featuring black and white and color photographs and inspirational quotes. You can purchase by going to facingourselves.org backslash reckoning and in person or online at Chaucer's Books in Santa Barbara, California. Patricia says, this is my love letter. Along with the rest of humanity, I witnessed the isolation and the terror of a pandemic and the outpouring of passionate calls for racial and economic justice. Balanced by the respite that our natural world brought to the everyday lives of those fortunate to experience it, I mourn the lack of contact with my family and my friends and sought inspiration from others who have so much to teach us. Patricia Houghton Clark. We'll be right back. Okay, let me. Oh, that was still up to date, Patricia. Okay. Okay. This? <clears throat> okay, um, Patricia, can you hear me? Yes, I can. can you okay. Hear? Yes, yes, now I can. Uh, so I'm going to come back with. Um, I'm going to ask the question: Why did you uh, why did you name your gallery show at Silo One One Eight Primal Wild? And then I'm going to say that the answer is in your Primal Wild Artist Talk that you had at the at the it was at the Silo One One Eight, right? Yeah. Okay. And then I'm going to ask you to read that speech if you don't mind, like we talked about. Okay. Ready? Three, two, one. Your life. Welcome back to the Jeremiah Show. Joining us this hour is the fascinating, international, award-winning, fine for art photographer, Patricia Houghton-Clark. Um, Silo 118 has a gallery showing. They, they started, um, God, they started this back on October 14th to the 29th of October, right? And uh, it was it had such a great showing and so much demand. They've extended those dates to November 12th. At silo 118. You can go to silo118.com for more information. Um, Patricia is our special guest here today. And I wanted to, I just love the title of the Primal Wild of the gallery show at Silo 118. Um, why did she name it Primal Wild? The answer, Dr. D, is in Patricia's Primal Wild Artist Talk. Ah. She gave a talk. At the, at the gallery one night, the reading. So Patricia, now I'm gonna ask her to uh, most kindly read from her speech right now for us. And you're gonna get the answer. I'm happy to do that for you, Jeremy. Th thank you. My feelings about what I observe, the composition and the light inspire how I receive imagery. I do my best to get out of the way and let wonder come through. Sometimes they are as I imagine, and sometimes they arrive as a complete surprise. Whether I'm photographing people or street scenes or landscapes, the feeling is always the same. The redwoods have been a constant throughout my life, starting very young. On family summer trips to the Northwest, our parents always made sure to stop and wander among these magnificent giants, instilling a shared love for the forest that still inhabits us all. In later years, my own little family was looking for safe and beautiful space, and we bought 40 acres of forest land in Humboldt County, surrounded by redwoods. My children's heritage includes a deep love and respect for these forests, and they are passing it on to their children. Hopefully, this cycle will continue for generations to come. This show is called Primal Wild because my interior landscape was calling for solid earth and silence and beauty. An urgent situation in my immediate family thrust me into the depths and I was overcome by a longing to be held in a place that matched my own primal and raging wild. And so in 2014, I found myself setting out back to the redwoods, this time with a simple camera in hand. I have since returned many times seeking solace in a challenging world to several different groves always with my simple camera and no expectations. I imagine I will continue these expeditions in the years to come 
and will see and feel something extraordinary every time. Mm, beautiful. I love this that line because my interior landscape was calling for solid earth and silence and beauty. Interior landscape. I like that. I'm going to have to borrow that if I may. Uh, in my program, I encourage people to go within to listen to that still small voice, and I encourage them to spend time in that quiet, peaceful, calm, still place, just just relaxing and listening. And uh, I like I like that phrase. I have a question for you, and it kind of stems from a song, a country song I heard, uh, where uh, and and the gist of the song was uh, this conversation was taking place between the singer songwriter and an interviewer, and the interviewer asked him. Uh, what would you do if you weren't doing this? Well, the whole song basically says, I'd be doing this if I wasn't doing this, basically. Is there anything else that you can even imagine yourself doing if you weren't doing this? No, there isn't. There really isn't. It's, it's sort of the, all these different elements of my life and myself have come together in my work. And the work takes different forms. So I don't just do gallery exhibitions. I do, and I'm working on a, a documentary project that's a really kind of broad right now. And that mm. is as well to get involved. I like collaborating with people, but it's all connected. It's all connected. And so it's, it fills me up. It's very nourishing for me. Mm -hmm. Well, you have a way of with words as well. And, and you know, that, you know, that, that quote uh, in your speech, because my interior landscape was calling for solid earth and silence and beauty. Uh, you know, I wanted you to explain that, but I, but I, but you do such a good job with so few words. And I think we can all probably, uh, unless you'd like to explain it, but you're thinking, <laughs> you know, earth and, and that feeling when you're among the redwoods or you're in a forest or you're, or after a rain or just you know that silence that solid earth that beauty that you get you get so much back from um what is uh patricia what is the relationship between you and your camera what is that is there a special relationship there or do you is it just a vessel for your for your eye it's it's an it's kind of become an extension of me, I'd say. And uh, it doesn't really matter which camera I use. I use a few different cameras. I chose to use a plastic camera that shoots analog film to be working in the redwoods. I do I kind of go back and forth between digital and analog. And the the analog um, the style of shooting that I really like. Um, to do with the analog camera is it's basically a no technology camera. There, there's very little control you have over the camera. And so you're really relying on your eye and mm -hmm. your sense of composition and the mm -hmm. light. it's really it. And you literally have to tape the camera closed to keep the plastic pieces from being mismatched. And it's called a Holka. <laughs> <laughs> with it and 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 but for certain things you know the portrait series i did in italy was all digital but it's i always shoot with natural light so i i um, am someone who doesn't resonate with a lot of mechanics okay so i tend to if i do a portrait it's always finding the natural light mm, i like i like that so it, for me uh, gear would get in the way. Do you understand what I mean? Yeah, I do. So, for example, when I'm doing, a, when I did the, the refugee um, series in Italy, I realized that a lot of my subjects had never had their photograph taken. And so I, I realized I needed to kind of talk them through it because I think we all know that feeling when a camera goes up you kind of freeze a little bit. Right, right. Everything is in between you. And um, the train's coming. <laughs> well, 
I, that is so interesting. I, cause one of my, my next question for you was, is there a safety and a comfort for you, Patricia, when you position your instrument between you and your subject, is there a comfort for you? But I hadn't thought about that. I mean, the, the, what you're describing when you turn a camera on someone and that, that, that initial reaction of all those things that they kind of yeah, go through. Yeah, I didn't talk about that because it's really kind of, um, for me and, and it explains sort of how i feel let's take let's take the break while while your train goes by um and by the way do you have to catch that train or are you off to another great country <laughs> or another state uh we'll be right back with um our, well now the train sounds like the train's gone it's just going by it it was quick <laughs> international award-winning fine art photographer patricia houghton clark we'll be right back do you want to do a commercial? Uh, no, I think I got. Okay. You can drop that one. I recorded it in there maybe. All right. Um, so we got one segment left here. Like what? Nine minutes, eight minutes? Nine minutes. So I've got, here's a couple things I've got. I want you to finish describing that, what you were talking about before the train cut you off, Patricia, if you would. And then um, going back to, uh, do we want to talk any more about the, the primal wild uh, is there anything that you haven't said on that that you'd like, you know, people that are out there listening that are going to come see the, the extended show, um, gallery showing? Is there anything else to say there? Well, I would say, all I would say is that what has been really interesting to me um, is to see how people walk in and feel like they're getting a forest back. Uh, okay, so let's do that. So I'm going to, I'll ask that, I'll kind of set you up on that question, but let's finish. You had a thought that sounded like it was a pretty good one about the camera and and the, and the how people react. Was there something more that you wanted to say there? So what I, what, what we're all aware of, I'm sure. Oh, hold on one second. So we're, we're not recording yet. So let me bring you back. All right. Okay. Three, two, what, you like? Welcome back to the Jeremiah Show. We've got, uh, as our very special guest today, international award-winning fine art photographer with a gallery show showing right now, Silo 118 down in the funk zone, Patricia Houghton Clark. Welcome back, Patricia. We were talking about before the break, uh, your series that you shot in Italy and how some of the people had not, uh, your subjects had not been photographed before. And that feeling that that in between that camera, that comfort or discomfort, uh, please continue. Yeah, so, so I realized that it was gonna be helpful for me to explain what's happening between us. Hmm. So I, I hold the camera up and I say, you see this machine here? So we'll be talking for a few minutes and I'm always maintaining eye contact. And then I'll put the camera up and I say, you see, I'm putting this machine in front of my eye, but you, you need to understand that that's my eye. And we're still having a conversation. The photo session is a conversation between us. It's not a surface. I'm not photographing your surface. Right. I'm actually connecting with who you are. And it's been amazing, actually, to see how there's this like, oh, you know, this sort of, relaxing that happens yeah that's great I, I love that i think i might have to use that every time i photograph my family from here on out <laughs> no i love that though not to make light of it i think that's a beautiful way to put that and uh and it, and it's um a whole new way of looking at it. really i could see where that all of a sudden you, they get it or you get it and you're like okay she's still looking at me there's nothing let's just there's, there's almost that aspect of the Native American uh, perspective that uh, they didn't like their pictures taken because they felt that you were taking their soul. When you took their picture, you were taking their soul. And in a manner of speaking, you're not taking it, but you are sort of, you are capturing it, but you're not actually taking it in the image. They still get to keep their soul, but now you've got, I don't know you if you'd call it a, a reflection or or uh, what have you. And you got a connection person. between oh, And a connection, Patricia, exactly. yeah. 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 Uh, tell me, let's go back to your um, uh, Primal Wild, your show, at, your gallery showing at uh, Silo 118. What is, um, what's your perspective from for how it's going and, and what, and what uh, people that walk through the gallery and see your, your beautiful artwork, 
um, how they take that in. What are what are you what are you feeling from that? What I what I've noticed in um, people's reaction is that there is almost a palpable kind of energy drop in the room, and it gets really quiet. And I have had people tell me there and also write to me and say that they felt like they were taking a forest back. Hmm. And that's something that happened. I forget the term in Japanese, but there is a Japanese term for going into nature and literally taking what they call a forest bath in order to keep your nervous system calmed down and your anxiety level lower. And, and it's really interesting to see that that these framed photographs are somehow also conveying that and maybe partly because it's really um it's not a mixed subject it's all redwood forests every picture is from a redwood forest and different aspects of a redwood forest some of them are very detailed some of them are you know looking up you know that classic kind of looking yeah up the trees and some of them are a little like uh just like little holes into the universe, you know, that you don't expect. And um, so I think there's, what I was really hoping to convey was how it felt to be in there. And and I think that we've accomplished that. Yeah, it sounds like you have. Did you say, did you call it a forest bath? Yeah. Oh, I love that. Mm -hmm. I love that. That's a great, that's a wonderful imagery yeah. uh, above, in the rural area above Santa Barbara in the mountains of Los, Los Padres National Forest. And I was surrounded by redwoods. And there are times when I'll just stand there. I'll just stand there. Your mic might be off, Dr. D. Don't worry about it. I'll edit it. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Uh, okay. We've got a couple minutes left. There's so many things to talk to you about, Patricia, but tell me about, because I'm very curious and I think it'd be, we can end on this, facing the Facing Ourselves project. So you want just an overview of it? Yeah. I mean, I can, I know it was forged on the front lines of the surging wave of Northern Amer uh, African, Western Asian, and the Middle Eastern refugees. Um, and then, the, you know, then you tell us about the documentary, the uh, documentarians. Yeah. <laughs> oh, boy. Let's, let's clean that up a little bit, too, Dr. Mm -hmm. let's, mm -hmm. let's, let me just go. Let me just ask you about the Facing Ourselves project and give us a, a couple minute overview, if you wouldn't mind, if, if that's important for you to get out there, which I think it is. Okay. Um, Facing Ourselves project, I started in a little village in southern Italy um, where I had been artist resident in 2011 and I was really welcomed into the community and I speak Italian which really helped but um, so I went back there five years later because of the influx of the refugees and the migration issues that were happening all over Europe and so the project is really it really is a broad concept obviously mm -hmm. and so what does that mean and we're not just facing ourselves, but we're facing each other. And there are so many ways to go with it. So it's, it has started as a portrait project and going into communities. I've worked in London and I've worked here in Carpinteria. And um, now it's broadening into a, a larger kind of deep dive into family ancestry. And so it's a wide open project that I think has a lot of potential to do some really interesting things and bring up a lot of interesting approaches yeah and you can get to you can find out more and, and see how you can help through patricia's website uh patricia houghtonclark.com and i'm going to spell it h-o-u-g-h-t-o-n uh patricia houghtonclark.com there's you can find out and read a lot more on that it's so interesting and the and the photography and the work that you display on your Instagram and also on your website, I uh, really encourage you can go there and you can spend hours and hours looking at Patricia's artwork and her photography. Patricia, thank you so much for joining us. Just the last thing I wanted to say, what your Obama series in 2007, which I believe was probably shot up at the City College. It looks like part of it was shot up there. I was actually at that um, at that that rally, that speech. So that's I, I loved looking back at those photos. Um, that was such an amazing, such a different time in the country 
uh, as far as the, the the feeling of hope at that time when Obama was out and talking and speaking mm. and just the whole country versus right now. So I hope I hope we can get a little bit of a taste of that back at some point. But it's nice to look at all of your photographs. And thank you so much for your art and for coming on the show and sharing a little bit of your life with us. Again, it's been such a pleasure to be with you both. Oh, thank you, Patricia. So again, the show uh, is at Silo 118. You can check it out on silo118.com and communicate, but listen more and evolve. See you next week. Okay, we're clear. Did you want to get a sound bite? Oh, we're good. Thank you, Patricia. Patricia, thank you. That was fabulous. Oh, thank you, guys. It was really fun. <laughs> good. <laughs> all right. Well, I'll send this off to you soon, okay, at all the air dates. Thank you so much again. I hope to meet you in person. I'll come down to uh, – are you going to be at the at Silo 118?